Hi, welcome back to my channel. It is your girl, Savannah Sharp, future IFBB Bikini Pro. Today's video, I'm going to teach you guys all about posing. This is my most requested video that I have ever had. So thank you guys for submitting comments. I always ask on my channel what you guys want to see and posing. So this video is for you if you're an NPC bikini competitor and you're looking to improve your posing. Keep in mind, this video is going to be filmed in July of 2022. Posing trends do change over the year. It might not be relevant if you're watching this in 2023, 2024. Just know that the posing trends do change every single show and pro show. What you can do is make sure you're paying attention and you're watching shows, you're going to shows, and you have a posing coach that you trust that is staying up to date on the trends. First, I wanna talk about bikini posing, why we pose, what is the purpose of posing, and why it's important to you to practice you're posing very early on if you are starting a bikini competition. If you are here and you're watching this, you're most likely signed up for a competition. When should you start posing? And this is a question that is going to be kind of dependent on how far out you are. I personally think that for your first ever show, you need to start posing the second that you decide you're going to be on stage. Bikini posing is not natural. It's not something that comes easy to most where you're twisting, tweaking, and holding these positions. So it's important that you start as soon as possible. Why we pose in the way that we do for bikini is we're not just standing there flaunting our butt and shaking our butt on stage. That is not it. We are trying to show balance from top to bottom. We're trying to hide our weaknesses and flaws with how we turn and twist. We're trying to get a lot of width. We're trying to be confident, keep our core tight so that that the way they can look for the S curve. The S curve is a shoulder cap to a small waist to a full round glute and like nice and tight and package. And it, you know, every single pose is going to look different on each competitor based on your muscle size, your weaknesses, your strain, everything included. So some of these tips may or may not apply to you, but it's really important that you have a general idea for the basics of posing, and then you work and practice to make it your own so you can figure out which movements look best on your physique. It's not one size fits all. There's generally about a standard-ish front pose and back pose, but the transitions is where you can have fun. The criteria for how you're going to get judged. So for judging, posing goes into overall presentation. So you are judged over your whole entire package. It's not just posing, it is confidence, it's skin tone, it's hair, it's makeup, it's jewelry, it's the suit, it's everything. It's your muscle structure and your balance. But the main goal of posing is to show your best physique to the judges at all times. Bikini gets to pose to random house music. Other divisions like bodybuilding and as you go up, they have minute long routines where they get to pick the music that you're being posed to. Bikini, you get, you don't get to pick your music. It is randomly mixed by the DJ of some type of poppy, mainstream music. So you will not pick your music. You don't need to, um, but there will be music going on while you're doing your individual routine and comparisons. So how the posing works and breaks down is you will have about 10 to 15 seconds as an MPC bikini amateur to do your individual routine. What you will actually be judged on is your front pose and your back pose. You're not necessarily judged on your transitions or side poses, but the judges can't unsee something on stage. That's why it's really important that you practice your entire routine, start to finish. You practice your walk, you practice standing in a front pose, being able to hold your conditioning. The judges are trying to look for your flaws. So your posing needs to hide your flaws and show your assets. Okay, so that's kind of how the judging breaks down of the physique and how to set up and like how it works. So on stage at most shows, what they will do is called initial comparisons. Initial comparisons is the first time that you will get on stage. You're not gonna go on stage normally by yourself. Some shows run differently than others, but what you 
usually happens right now in the NPC for bikini is that every single person in your height class is going to go on as, you know, maybe one or two different groups. You're going to be in alphabetical order. You're going to see it on the front line and the judges are going to walk you through cues. So that's the first time that you'll step on stage and pose in initial comparisons. What's happening right now is they're just looking at the group of girls. They're saying, okay, what who do we have? What is the general conditioning of the entire group before they start figuring out who's in first call outs, second call outs, third call outs. But you are, that is the initial comparisons in my opinion is the most important part of your posing because they're making that decision very, very quickly about whether you're gonna be in first call outs or last call out. So when you go on stage, you're gonna go as a group and you're gonna follow one by one, kind of like follow the leader and you'll be posing on a line on the center box. The head judge is going to walk you through cues. So you're gonna stand in your front position into your front pose and we'll get to that in just a minute. The head judge is going to cue you to get into your back pose. It's about two to three circles. You will not be walking to the back curtain. Most of the times you only walk to the back curtain when you are in um, an overall pose. So you'll hear, thank you ladies, you know, face the back. So you'll transition, you're gonna hit your back pose and then you'll see, you know, face front, face back, face front. Thank you, ladies. We'll see you for initial comparisons. So I would plan on about two to three spins just because they're looking, they're just kind of looking up top down. They're just kind of, okay, they're looking at different girls. They're picking, their, they're kind of picking out, they're talking to each other of, I think this girl is going to be in my first call outs, second call outs. They're just looking for what's going on in this, um, you know, just kind of seeing the pool of athletes and who sticks out and uh, of what's going on. Initial comparisons, they're going to kind of talk individually about you if you're a top call out or not, if the judges want you in the top call outs. Um, but the initial comparisons, I honestly believe that's where a lot of the judging gets done. So that's the first time that you're going to come out. The second time that you're going to come out, you're going to still remain in alphabetical order. You will go on stage and hit the center box by yourself and do your entire posing routine, which is about 10 to 15 seconds. They will call your name. You're going to walk into the center box, hit a front pose. You're going to transition, hit a back pose, hit another front pose, say goodbye to the judges and exit. There's a chance that you might be holding your front pose on stage while the rest of the athletes in your class finish, or you're going to exit the stage while more athletes are on. After initial comparisons and your individual routines are done, everyone in that entire class will go on stage and they'll be on the diagonal lines of the show. And that's when the judges are going to deliberate of who they'd like to see in their top call outs. They'll call by number everyone that they believe is going to place, you know, one through maybe up to eight, maybe nine girls, depending on how big your class is. And then they start to do movement on stage stage. So they're still going to be giving you clues. A lot of times they bring everyone on stage and then they'll say again, face the back. So you'll go from your front pose to your back pose, bring you back to the front pose. Then they're going to start swapping you and other competitors. The closer that you are to that center box, the more likelihood that you have of placing. A lot of times on the stage, so the center person is one, right or left is two or three. Then it's going to go. So it's like first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. So the closer that you are to the middle, the higher that you have a chance of placing, the closer you are to the edges or the wings, the least high placing that you're going to be. But again, keep in mind, sometimes if there is a clear winner, they will have them in the center box and then directly move them on the side because they already know that she's a clear winner. So do not count yourself out if you're not ending prejudging in the center box. Sometimes you can win the entire show because if you were so good that they were comparing second, third, fourth, and fifth, and you will be on, you know, closer to the wings. Don't get discouraged if you do get missed or moved outside of the center box. Same thing for second call outs. You never know if a judge misses you in first call outs and then can recall you back. Crazy things happen, especially at the night show or when pro cards are on the line. So keep that in mind. Just keep posing, keep smiling, keep up until, until there is medals around your neck 
anything can go and posing can change placing can change that's prejudging after prejudging they will dismiss your class until the final sometimes finals are directly after but a lot of times there'll be a couple of hour period while other classes are finishing up gives the judges a little bit of a break and then you're gonna come back for finals finals depends on the show sometimes they're gonna let you do everything they're gonna let you do your individual routine then they're gonna do call outs but finals runs a lot faster than prejudging almost 99% of the judging is going to be done during prejudging the final show is more for the audience and it is for medals and awards they're gonna try to run the show pretty fast because they've been you know everyone's been there a long time they want the athletes to get you know what you know get a meal like get out at a time so they can still enjoy their weekend with their family so a lot of times there's not going to be any judging at the night show sometimes there is but the only thing that's going to get live judge at the night show for the most part is the overall okay so what that looks like sometimes they'll just do top five top ten if it's a national show um every single girl will get to go on first second third call outs but you won't get to do your individual routine i believe unless you are top five or top six but you just will wave your hand exit the stage they'll just say your name and then that's it for you if you're in top five you will individually get to go and do your individual routine they're going to put you on the side box and then they will go backwards from fifth place sometimes sixth place until first place and that's how they do the placings you know fifth fourth third um it's very 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 fast and then if you get first place in your height class there's classes a through h um, and that some some will be less if they don't have as tall of girls so those eight class winners at the end if you've already got first place the live judging because they've never seen you with these other girls who just got first place they're gonna bring you all back on stage and you're just gonna do a comparison round so it will go in order not alphabetized but it'll be a class winner B class winner C D E F G H you're gonna be lined up on you know comparisons they're going to twist you around they're going to move you around and then they will over win they will uh, award the overall winner of the entire bikini show if you walk away an overall winner in open like you beat everybody that's that's what they're saying it's like you beat everyone that's how the judging and the posing that you're expected to do and let's get into front pose front pose transition footwork we're gonna talk about that, so stay tuned. Okay, so what I wanna show you guys is the bikini front pose and just give you a couple cues, tips that I've learned as far as footwork, as far as twisting and turning. So in the bikini front pose, um, we are looking for two shoulders, we're looking for a small waist, we're looking for glutes and hamstrings. So when I set up, I always set up from the ground up in my head I scan myself on stage so when I step into the box, the center box, I'm getting my feet set, twisting my hips, keeping my core tight as I scan and then I'm bringing my arm in the correct position, long tall neck, posing through the shoulders, very very tall, sucking in, smiling and that's when I know I'm set in my front pose. So I'm going to get into that and show you what I do. So I pose on my left side hip facing the judges and my right side facing an angle. So if you were the head judge, when I step in, I have my this front foot about a 45 degree angle, and this foot is about at the heel of, they're like standing next to each other. I pop this toe and I point 45 degrees. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna twist my hips so they're almost the opposite direction. There's gonna be a lot of twisting of your trunk involved so we have to keep our hips here. That way you can see the hamstring and the glute and this little small waist. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna twist my upper body forward facing the judge while keeping my hips turned in that direction. The back hand is gonna naturally grab at your waistline and then this front shoulder is going to roll back and be you know, very close to your glutes but it's relaxed, it's not tight, it's not out here, it's just relaxed. We're gonna pose very tall, we're gonna smile, we're gonna twist, we're gonna suck it in, and we're gonna stay tall. We're not gonna try to pinch right here, we're not trying to 
pinch and shrink ourselves. We want to be upright and tall. Same thing for this hip. I'm not going to press into my hip. I am going to keep my hips nice and tall, which is going to help you look leaner. So when I step into my front pose, I'm going to step here with that. All right. And smile. So this is my front pose. Okay. You can do it on this side. You can do it on this side if you want. This is harder for me. This is not my most dominant side. But when you pick a side, you want to pick whatever feels most natural for you and whatever side gives the best shape of the shoulder, the hamstring, and the glute. So play around with which side if you want to do this side or if you want to do this side. And same thing, your toe placement. There's so many different ways to do it. This front leg, as far as the angle that you put your foot, is going to depend on how quad dominant you are. I have pretty small quads, I guess. So I could technically put it a lot more sideways, but if you have a thicker quad, you might want to make it look smaller by putting your toe more facing towards that head judge. So, you know, you can have your toe almost perpendicular to you, still twisting. I can go 45 degrees or I can go almost 100% this way. Just depends. So you gotta play around with what looks best to you in this pose, okay? So you can get to your next pose as your transition. So somehow we have to get from our front pose to the back pose. So what I do is I do a small step back. I will keep my hands really close to my body, not covering it like this. I push all of my weight from this front hip to my back hip. So it's really just a transfer of weight. So I transfer my weight from this one to this hip. I keep my shoulders, nothing moves with my shoulders. So we're here, course tight. All that happens is that, okay? Smile tight and we're still twisted so they can see my shoulders, my course tight, my glutes. You can still see my glutes. Everything's in, okay? You can decide if you wanna go clockwise or counterclockwise. So you can, most people are gonna want to just, instead of taking a step, you just will go this way and keep going around. Or what you can do is what I do is I take a step and I hit my side pose this way. So you can go either one. If you do take a step, this is more of an advanced, advanced poser. It's a lot easier if you just go in the direction like this. So just know that if you take a step, it's more in an advanced movement because you can lose your balance and it's a little bit harder to master to make it look graceful. So you have to be able to do it very small step, twist, and I want to keep this leg locked. So I lock this knee out. This one, my feet are gonna be in a T. So this one is like perpendicular to the head judge. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this hand I press it onto my thigh. I don't want to have any of this. I hate seeing this like weird gap. So you want it to be flat right here. So that way on this side pose, what I can see is my silhouette. I can see my caps, my rear delts. I can see that small waist and then my glute pop and my hamstrings on the side. You can see a little bit of the suit top in this position. So when I do it right here, but I'm doing it very tall. So I'm not, again, I'm not squishing myself like this. A lot of girls squish and try to push, but then you start seeing this weird roll stuff. We don't want that. So we're gonna be tall. This leg is going to be locked. This back leg is in a T and we are looking over our shoulder, stomach, core tight and smiling. Okay, so that's the transition pose. Technically, you're not judged on the transition pose, but you are. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're gonna get into our back pose. The back pose is honestly, um, it is my worst pose because that is where my weakness is. So a lot of people will 
mess your back pose up because you're pushing too hard or bending too far, far forward. So we don't want that. So let me show you from the side angle. My feet are about hip width apart. So for the back pose, they're about hip width apart, slightly outward. I like to put a little bit of pressure and twist my knees outside so I don't look bow legged. I'm gonna lock them out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to think pelvis to the floor. So imagine your pelvis is rotating. You see? Okay, so I'm just standing here and then I'm just rotating my pelvis down towards the floor. So it's just a pelvic tilt. And then my hands are going to be placed on the inside of my thighs. We don't want to see fingers coming through in our back pose. So like if you're in your back pose, keep in mind we don't want to see fingers like this. So when you hold your hand, a lot of times you can hold them like this. Sometimes people open them up, but we just don't want to see those fingers. So a lot of times what I will do is just hold them right here and press on the inside of my thighs, right like this. You can hold here, you can do it like this, you can do it like this. There's not really a wrong way, but just so you don't see fingers, okay? So right now I'm hip with stance. My back is going to be open. So in the back pose, hopefully you can see this, I'm not going to pinch my shoulder blades like that. I want it to be natural. So I'm gonna have my feet like this. I'm gonna have that lower back tar tilt. I'm gonna open up my back. My hands are going to go on my thighs. And I'm gonna arch like that. Okay, so it's really important in your back pose that your eyes don't look too much at your feet and that you're looking straight, like literally just straight across. So like when I'm in my back pose, I don't wanna look down. You, you don't want your neck to look down. You want your neck high and looking like literally just straight back. That's what I do with my eyes and my hair is all the way in, my, in the back. I do wanna put pressure on my hands right here. So that way you guys can kind of see and when I put pressure on my hands, I'm kind of flexing my rear delts. I personally don't have enough development in my rear delts to see them. So I have to put a lot of pressure on my thighs to flex my rear delts in my back pose. Okay, so like I was saying, so you wanna open up your back. It's about hip width stance in the back pose and just that arch. So that arch is something that is really hard for new competitors to do. So a lot of people do this mistake, so don't make this mistake, okay? Watch, this is, some people do this. This is not going to help. You know, you might see more hamstring, but the judges, they sit at a lower angle. So the judges are sitting at a lower angle, so whenever you tilt forward, you're actually going to flatten out that hamstring and glute tie-in. So your glutes are not going to look as good. And your, the judges are going to see your butthole, guys. We don't want to show our butthole angle to the judges. It's family friendly. So the better you will actually look your best and leanest, the more tall in that you can learn to pose. And so the more that you can learn how to pelvic tilt, the better. We're gonna, sh I'm gonna show you a couple of things that you can do. Um, sometimes I will pose with a countertop and put my hands on the counter to help get that arch. So let's show you a few different things that you can do to improve your arch. Okay, so right here, I'm gonna use the countertop. I have my glutes like this. I'm just gonna push pressure and I'm going to try to push as hard as I can, just arching, staying as tall as possible. So that's one thing that you can do. You know, whenever you're at a countertop, you can just practice that stretch. A lot of times, hi bud. A lot of times, if you just do some yoga, you can work on that lower back flexibility, but you're going to be super sore. Like that position, 
of how much arch that you have, it's gonna make your lower back really, really sore. I always get sore when I pose, so just prepare for that. Um, it takes time to develop those muscles, but I'm gonna show you a couple of items that might help you with your back pose flexibility. Okay, so two items that are staple for getting more flexible in your lower back pose is this yoga wheel. I got this on Amazon and then a foam roller. I don't, I think I, I've had this for a long time, but probably on Amazon. This is really nice. So what you can do is you just lay on it and just stretch. So I will show you how to do that right now. So you can uh, just get into this position right here. So it's just gonna open up your back and just lay on this in that lower back. Just kind of surrender yourself to the yoga wheel like this and practice just stretching your lower back. And then if you want to take it to the next level, you can also put your knees like this, like that, and then really stretch. You can just lay on um, a foam roller and roll out your lower back. The more flexible that you can get in that back position, the better, where you can literally just lay on top of this and arch as hard as you can. So that's a couple things for the back pose, but let's go back into posing of how to get from your back pose to your front pose. There's unlimited ways of how you can do your footwork from back pose to front pose, but I'm just gonna show you what I do. Now we are going to transition from the back pose back to the front pose. So you can decide how you want to go. You can go right or you can go left. So you can decide if we're gonna go right or if we're gonna go left, whatever makes more sense for your routine. Okay, so if we go this way, this is the way that I go. I will be in my back pose I take a step in like this, then I swivel my feet and hit my front pose one more time. So you can do it like that. We go this way. This is backwards for me, but the same thing. We come in, we swivel. For this, it's kind of hard because this is the hip that I use, but I feel because I have to do a full circle. So I like to do this here and then I'm already in this S pose and then hit my um, front pose one more time. My exit, so how I exit is like this. I wave to the judges with my entire hand and then I give them one more blue shot and kick. So um, that is how I get from my back pose to the front pose. So as far as my feet go, I wanna show you my feet. Okay, I know I'm not in heels, but you can practice in tennis shoes. A lot of my practice is going to be in tennis shoes because it's more comfortable. And then once I get my footwork down, I'll start doing it in heels. Okay, so this is my front pose. So I'm gonna step in to my front pose, how I do it. So you guys can watch my feet like this. So it's like 45 degree angle, pop this toe and I twist. What I do when I step back, so my transition pose, this foot just glides back and then I pop this one. So what it looks like is here, like that. When I'm transitioning, I'm going to bring this foot very close and then this back foot is in a T right here. Then I'm going to step out with this back foot right here and here get into my back pose. And then I'm going to bring my foot here, twist, and step into my front pose. So a lot of times you can just practice your footwork. 
So I would recommend just practicing your footwork without your hands, just to kind of get a feel for the steps. And then that's when you can start incorporating the twisting of your, your midsection. And then you can start looking at your hands and your routine. As a general rule of thumb, the smaller the step, the more control that you have and the less jiggle and shake. We don't want to see jiggle and shake because fat jiggles and shakes. I know that's kind of, it's kind of weird and it's kind of like, whoa, yeah, they're really, lo they're looking for fat. They're looking for body fat on you. So that's what, when body fat shakes and jiggles, muscle is tight and tone. So the smaller steps, when you do dramatic steps, that's when you're in type, like you can't help it even if you're muscular. If you step hard and you step big and wide, you are going to create shake, which looks like body fat. Um, so that's why all the steps in your posing routine need to be very soft, very graceful, and very small. The least amount of steps, the better. A lot of competitors get nervous and they do the stutter step. So this is like, if you're nervous, I'm gonna show you what it looks like if you're nervous with your feet and then if you have pretty feet, okay? So if you're nervous, you're gonna take these weird big steps. So if I step and I have big dramatic steps and then I like take a couple steps and then I go like this and kind of, I'm like taking like, and steps like look at all this shiggle and you know jiggle and shake and then I go like this and this and it's just it's not pretty it's not fluid it doesn't look confident except for when I step into that front pose BAM statue one movement BAM statue nothing else happens BAM hold it one Okay, so in the a couple of different things to think about in the front and back pose is just every time when you're posing, you're practicing smiling. And I try to practice with my hair down. I know it's up right now for this video, but when you're practicing, it's important that you get a feel for like what it's gonna feel like on stage. <clears throat> what it's gonna feel like on stage. So you should also, you know, be in a suit, be in a practice suit, um, and then practice in your jewelry as well, because that's all going to add up. I practice, um, as far as my routine, for what that looks like every single day in the gym, I'll probably do, you know, one or two routines with my feet um, throughout the day. I just throw in a routine just so I can just remember it, and then I'll do like a full-on posing practice session with the heels, the suit, everything, about, you know, maybe, one to two, maybe three times a week. And then the closer that I get to my show, the more times I will start to add in posing. Okay, so that video was a recap of a little bit about posing. If you guys would like more posing tips or whether there was stuff about posing that I did not cover that you still have questions on, please drop a comment below and let me know what other questions you guys have about posing. I'm a posing coach myself, so I'm going to include a link if you'd like to schedule a session with me. I do 15 minute sessions or 30 minute sessions online via FaceTime. Um, so you can let me know if you'd like to post with me. I would love to help you guys. And I just started prep, so I'm really excited to start posing more. I love posing. One tip of advice that I can give you with posing is try not to copy the pros and get inspired by pro routines or other people that you see doing these crazy hand motions, but nail the basics. Sometimes simple is better. Don't try to do a lot when you first start off. If you can nail your front pose and hold it, nail your back pose and hold it and do a very short and sweet transition, it's gonna look super confident on stage and keep improving your routine. My routine has changed every single time I've stepped on stage, but it's evolved and it's gotten a lot better. If you guys could see my first routine compared to my last routine, it's been a huge difference. So I love you guys. Don't forget to like and make sure you subscribe so you never miss any more posing tips. Bye.